Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The government's being urged to bring contracts from the construction giant Carillion into public control amid fears it could collapse. It's a major supplier to the government and has contracts in the rail industry, including HS2, education and the NHS. It's struggled since reporting half-year losses of over a billion pounds and a significant pension deficit. Well, our business editor Simon Jack is here. And Simon, if Carillion goes under, so do sizable government projects. Yeah, Carillion's no ordinary private company. As you say, it's got some very sensitive public service contracts there with uh, prisons, with schools and hospitals. It's in big trouble. And a measure of that tonight, the BBC has learned, Danny Shaw was reporting today, that the Ministry of Justice is drawing up plans to bring a £200 million contract for maintenance on those prisons back under public control. Now, it's perhaps unsurprising that they're doing that, given the fact this company has been in a struggle for its life all week. On Wednesday, it met the banks, to whom it owes one and a half billion pounds to present a turnaround plan it was rejected on Thursday there was a huddle of ministers from from business from the Justice Department from the Department for Transport to look at the options if it did get into trouble and today they talked to the pension regulators to look at what happens to the 28,000 pension scheme members who would re receive reduced benefits if it fell into administration now the really bad news perhaps would be if it did go under would be for that army of subcontractors who provide stuff to Carillion and rely on them for payment it also also throws into question the whole idea of farming out the sensitive contracts to the private sector and unions and labor have sort of you know jumped on the plight of Carillion to say this shouldn't be done is Carillion too big too sensitive to fail no will the government do everything it can to stop that happening yes yeah. Simon thank you now regulators and government officials are holding urgent talks tonight on the huge construction group Carillion and its half billion pound pensions deficit the firm, which holds major outsourced government contracts, including the HS2 high-speed rail link, is struggling to avoid collapse. Unions are urging ministers to step in and protect the thousands of jobs which could now be at risk. Our economics correspondent, Helia Ebrahimi, reports. The ambition is sky high, but today's reality for one of Britain's biggest companies is very different. In its glossy promotional video, Carillion used to say its mission statement was helping governments and businesses build a better tomorrow. But locked in rescue talks with creditors and pension trustees, its own future now hangs in the balance. It's a long way down for a company with £5 billion of sales and 19,000 UK staff. With links to almost every aspect of government life and public spending, Carillion builds and runs schools and hospitals. It renews tracks for network rail and is part of the HS2 mega project. All over the UK, it lays down road and even the army is a client. But now its sprawling empire is in crisis. The shares are down 90% in 12 months. So somebody somewhere thinks the company's position is extremely precarious. From the government's perspective, 20,000 employees, extremely in the UK alone, extremely serious from their perspective, and for people who've worked for the company relying on it for their pension, it's extremely important as well. Today, shares in the company nosedived again amid suggestions that creditors rejected the latest rescue plan, but the company insisted talks were ongoing and remained constructive. Meanwhile, the pension lifeboat, the PPF, and the regulator met trustees to see what could be done about the £587 million deficit. Carillion not only builds hospitals like this in the Midlands, but operates them as well. Decades of privatisation and government outsourcing led to a bonanza in the support services industry, where companies became billion-pound behemoths. Well, I think this is a very worrying episode and it tells us a lot about the very fragile way in which this industry is operating and the very loose control the government appears to have over it. It does raise a sort of basic question about how the government should relate to these very large companies which are almost becoming too big to fail. Years of debt fueled expansion left Carillion vulnerable to the squeeze in government spending. A handful of projects from Aberdeen to Liverpool overran their budgets and led to a series of profit warnings and £1 billion of bad provisions on the books. With thin margins and a cash crunch, the whole edifice has unravelled like an old sock. 
The whole sector's gone from penthouse to outhouse in about two years. You want to make sure the people you're giving the business to are reliable, well-managed, and aren't operating, operating just for, say, the benefit of management and shareholders, but stakeholders and everybody associated with them. Now, Labour politicians warn that public services and Karelian's own survival have become too closely intertwined. It's not good enough for ministers to say this is Karelian's mess to sort out. There are clearly going to be financial implications for schools and hospitals across our country, and they need to get to grips with it. Tonight, the company remained in critical condition with no rescue deal signed off. The pressure remains fixed on the government to ensure contracts don't fall by the wayside as the lenders and pension trustees battle it out for what's left of the company. Well, those talks are still going on and Helia is here with the latest. Helia, is there any progress? Well, this is a really critical phrase and one person I spoke to close to the deal said it's operating at a very short timeline now. So one way or another, we could get a decision by next week. And even now, administrators are standing by. I think one of the problems for Carillion is that lenders are being asked to write off huge sums of money in, in exchange for a stake in the company. And what they don't want to have is, a, is the massive pensions liability. But of course, as we've seen with Tartar Steel, that means that the pension is just taken off the books. And for people who have worked their entire lifetimes, they're going to get less than they expected if the pension scheme goes into the pension's lifeboat. And that's the big debate. Who do you protect? Do you protect those who are close to retirement or those who are in the job right now? And I think another angle here is that while the government doesn't want to offer a bailout wholesale to Carillion, they could actually take some of the contracts they've given Carillion back in-house, in effect giving them some kind of rescue deal. Helia, plenty of questions. I'm sure you have some more answers in the next few days. Thank you. OK, let's come back here. And a major question mark looms tonight over the future of one of the UK's biggest building firms. Even though Carillion is a major contractor on a number of flagship government projects like high-speed rail, it is laden with debt. After issuing a string of profit warnings, the company's market value has slumped from a billion pounds to around 86 million, losing around 90% of its value in just six months. At the same time, Carillion faces a pension deficit of around £600 million. The company is said to need an injection of about half that amount. And while there is concern about the company's major projects, there's also the future of, of, future of its 43,000-strong workforce to consider around half of them in the UK. Today, as Carillion struggled to secure a rescue deal, its shares plunged again. Carillion. It's one of the biggest companies you've probably never heard of. A massive construction firm which also runs schools, hospitals and prisons. A private company with huge public contracts and it's in deep trouble. Well it's hugely worrying to the thousands of UK workers that we've got who currently work for the company. Those businesses in the wider supply chain and those who rely on the company's pension funds. Sources say administrators are on standby in case the company collapses. Meanwhile, the Financial Conduct Authority is investigating what shareholders have been told by management. In the city, there have been warning signs for months. Quillian's problems have been well versed in the city for the last year. Um, we've seen three profit warnings from the company in the last 12 months alone. The shares are down 90%. Carillion has contracts to help run almost 900 schools and manage 50 prisons. In the NHS, it provides 200 operating theatres and almost 12,000 inpatient beds. Last year, it secured a major contract to help build the HS2 railway. With Carillion involved in providing so many public services, crisis talks have been held here in Whitehall involving a long list of ministers from a wide variety of departments, including the Cabinet Office, Health, Education, Transport and the Treasury, which tells you everything you need to know about the scale of the impact there would be on government contracts if the company goes bust. Carillion's financial difficulties are being compared to the banking crisis by a former business secretary. It does raise a sort of basic question about how the government should relate to these very large companies which are almost becoming too big to fail. I mean, it's the kind of problem that we had during the banking crisis. Uh, and we need to get to the bottom of why the industry is so concentrated in a handful of companies. 
In a statement, the government says it's monitoring the situation. Earlier this evening, Carillion issued an update, insisting talks with its lenders to restructure the firm's debt are still ongoing. Angus Walker, News at 10. Very good evening to you. We start tonight with the last ditch attempts to save Britain's second largest construction group. The talks are due to take place tomorrow between Carillion bosses and government officials in a bid to try and secure a deal to prevent the company from going into administration. Now that could happen as soon as Monday and the company which employs nearly 20,000 people in the UK alone is building the HS2 high speed rail link among other big national infrastructure projects. The Sky's Ender of Brady is here now. Uh, how likely is it that this last ditch attempt will actually work? It's all or nothing really. We'll know everything in the next 24 hours. Carillion is teetering on the brink of collapse and I think everything that we should be worried about really is the fact that there's an accountancy firm on standby in case they do go into administration. So it would cause chaos for the government because if you look at Carillion, how big they are, 19,500 UK employees alone, 20,000 elsewhere in the world, half of the UK's prisons are run by Carillion and they're responsible for 50,000 MOD homes as well. So a massive company, second largest construction company in the UK and they've got massive problems, £1.5 billion in debt and that includes a pension shortfall of £587 million and at the moment the company's worth £61 million because the share price has gone through the floor over the last few weeks and months, down 90%, they're on their third chief executive inside five months and three profit warnings in the last five months as well. So desperately difficult times and the rescue plan that the company will put to Whitehall officials tomorrow that is absolutely crucial. OK, Ender, thank you. I'm joined from Shrewsbury by Professor Rudy Klein, who's Chief Executive of the Specialist Engineering Contractors Group, which represents 60,000 firms in the sector. Good evening to you. Is this last-ditch attempt by Carillion uh, to avoid administration likely to be successful? Oh, that's a, that's a $60 billion question. Um, I find it hard to believe that it will be. I have to say, um, I, I think we're now seeing uh, probably the, the the end. But um, but of course, something might come out of the hat in the next 24 hours. How significant is this? Because obviously, Carillion responsible for a number of infrastructure projects in the country, including HS2. Yeah. yeah. Well, they are. They, they are. And uh, I know um, we're all aware. I think the government has been putting into place some contingency plans in case. Uh, this happens, so I'm not quite sure what they are, but uh, but they're likely to be that uh, uh, they would have talked to other companies uh, to see whether they have capacity to take on some of this work. Um, I mean, I have to say, my, my major concern, overriding concern, is about the uh, the impact upon the supply chain, Carillion supply chains. I mean, people don't seem to realise very often that uh, big companies like Carillion uh, do little of the work themselves. Uh, mostly they outsource the work to supply chains comprising small and medium-sized businesses. Um, and it's these people that are now extremely worried about what's going to be happening over the next few hours. And I suppose as well, for its thousands of employees, uh, a lot of concern, especially because there seems to be a, a big pension deficit. Well, absolutely. For Carillion's employees, it's equally it's, it's a nightmare. But also, I should add to that, though, that um, equally the employees of the, the firms and the supply chains. I mean, there's thousands upon thousands of, uh, of employees there. And, um, of course, if anything did happen, uh, there could be or there will be a domino impact on the supply chain in terms of uh, firms finding it very difficult to be able to survive. I mean, there are firms out there at the moment that have been owed millions and millions of pounds by Carillion. Um, and, you know, we, we've been trying to say to the government um, over some years now, look, you know, make sure um, that the supply chain is protected, um, that uh, there are project bank accounts set up across the board so that when payments are made, they're not made directly to Carillion. They're made through a ring-fenced account or the supply chain. Uh, we've, we've raised this with HS2 uh, as well. Um, and we, we're also concerned about the... Um, the uh, millions of pounds in retention monies that are held by Carillion, because these, these are monies that are held back from payments um, to ensure that uh, people come back to rectify any non-compliant work. But in practice, the monies are used to bolster the working capital 
of uh, Carillion and others who take the money. Um, and why, so we're why, concerned about... If I can just ask there. you very quickly, why is it that Carillion's got into this problem? Because we've seen it's had three different people at the top in the last six months. Why is it going through these struggles? Oh, it's a, it's, that's a very difficult question, I think, um, to, to answer uh, as to why that has happened. Um, I mean, very often these problems occur uh, because of, um, uh, usually because of poor risk management. Uh, risk uh, construction is a, uh, an industry that is essentially about risk and risk management. And if you fail to manage your risks appropriately, on some of these big projects, then you really could uh, end up in serious trouble. It only takes one uh, or two projects to cause you problems, and that will then put the whole business in uh, a quandary. You, you have to remember that the, the business models of these large companies is such that they are all undercapitalized. They don't really have a great deal of resources. They rely on the uh, cash that uh, they get for their supply chains, they hold on to that, and they need that. I mean, Carillion has you know, uh, put out its payment days to about 120 a few years ago. Um, uh, and this is how they exist. Um, they, they're not uh, greatly capitalized. So any one project that, that, that um, isn't, um, is causing them problems, not risk managed properly, um, could uh, end up uh, with them being in serious trouble. It's, it's not just happened to Carillion, it's happened to other companies as well. OK, well, we will keep across that, of course, and those talks going on tomorrow. Uh, Professor Rudy Klein, thanks for your time. Thank you, Martha. The leader of the Liberal Democrats, Vince Cable, has warned the government it would send the wrong message if it bails out the struggling construction company Carillion using taxpayers' money. It's feared the firm, which has debts of £1.5 billion, could collapse. Carillion employs about 20,000 people in the UK and is one of the government's main contractors. Our business correspondent Joe Lynham reports. This is Liverpool's newest hospital under construction. It'll be the biggest single bed hospital in the UK and it's being built by Carillion. Now there's concern that projects like these could be affected if the company collapses. From prisons to hospitals to schools and rail, Carillion is responsible for some of the UK's largest infrastructure and maintenance projects. So should the government bail the debt laden company out? I think what has to happen in this case, uh, the contracts have to be kept going and supporting the supply chain and the tens of thousands of workers and that can be done by government taking a lot of this in-house or retendering in other cases that the government can't just do a financial bailout this is you know the the shareholders and the creditors the big banks have got to take a hit they can't just offload all the losses onto the taxpayer Carillion is a major British company. It has hundreds of contracts running prisons, maintaining hospitals and MOD facilities. With almost 20,000 employees here and tens of thousands more dependent on the company. But it has run up debts of one and a half billion pounds, including almost a billion pounds to its banks, whose patience has run out. Britain's biggest ever rail infrastructure project, High Speed 2, starts major construction this year and here at Euston Station. Carillion is supposed to build it, but given its mountain of debts, there's a very real chance that the government might step in and have to give those contracts to other companies or simply bail the company out with all the moral hazard that comes with that. The RMT union has called on the government to provide reassurances to thousands of workers who could be affected. Also caught in the crossfire are hundreds of smaller companies who carry out subcontracted work on behalf of Carillion. Potentially it could be devastating me because um, uh, many of them are owed millions by Carillion. And if they don't get those monies, they are, of course, at risk as a business. Uh, the other thing, of course, that there will be thousands of jobs potentially uh, lost as a result. If Carillion cannot be saved or restructured, the consultants EY have been put on notice to take over as administrators. It's a precautionary measure which the government and thousands of staff hope won't be needed. Well, Joe joins us now. This is an enormous dilemma for the government. What is it likely to do, Joe? Well, behind the scenes, there are definitely a load of meetings going on. There were a few uh, uh, on Thursday, and I understand there will be meetings by officials uh, this weekend. In fact, major departments are involved, such as the scale of the problem. So we've got transport, we've got the Treasury, we've got business, we've got justice. It's chaired by the Cabinet Office uh, officials, and they have got a new minister under David Liddington. The government is stressing that they have contingency plans in place and that these are robust if the company should need to go into administration. 
I have been told that this issue needs to be solved in a matter of days, not weeks. Okay, Joe, thank you.